Hello, hello, writers. I'm Kristen Kiefer, author of fantasy fiction and creative writing resources, and you are listening to the Well Storied Podcast, where I share insights, encouragement, and actionable advice designed to help you craft sensational novels and build your best writing life, always in 30 minutes or less, so you can get back to writing, of course. Ready for the show? Let's get talking. Come on in, friends. Grab a cup of coffee, grab a cup of tea, let's settle in and talk about how to format a book when self-publishing. Today's episode of the podcast translates the latest article from the Well-Storied blog into audio. Titled, How to Format a Book When Self-Publishing, you can find the article that also serves as the episode transcript at www.well-storied.com slash format. Now let's dive in. There's more to self-publishing than throwing your book up on Amazon and calling it a day. To become a successful independent author, you must treat your writing as a business. Your books are your products, and to sell well, they must rival books produced by traditional publishers. To do this, you must give ample thought to every element of your book's production, from editing and proofreading, to cover design, back cover copy, formatting, and more. Does that sound overwhelming? You're not wrong. Indeed, there are a plethora of book production tools, services, and resources available to writers who choose to self-publish. But not all of these options are created equal. Some are more trustworthy than others, while some are simply better suited to certain books or writers. How do you decide which options are best for you? Rather than fall victim to analysis paralysis, let's break down the most popular ways that self-published authors produce their books, beginning with five common interior formatting options. Think you're ready to format your book? Don't underestimate the power of a quality interior book design. Without proper formatting, a book can prove difficult or uncomfortable to read, meaning readers may not finish your book no matter how captivating the story. That said, don't worry about your book's interior design before you've completed and polished your manuscript. You can make small adjustments to your manuscript after formatting, such as fixing a quick typo, but if your book still needs to be edited or proofread, you aren't ready for interior design. Get thee to an editor. Now, with that established, let's take a look at five common book formatting options. Option number one, Vellum. Vellum is a fantastic app designed specifically to help fiction writers format their books. It's easy to use interface and various templates designed with specific genres in mind make formatting for print and ebook a cinch. Vellum also allows you to assemble box sets, produce advanced reader copies, add store links to your file, and export versions tailored to specific online distributors. At this time, Vellum is only available to Mac users, but there is a PC workaround that I've linked for you in today's episode transcript at well-storied.com format. You can also trial the app and format your manuscript without paying a dime. Vellum only charges its one-time fee, which is $199.99 USD for ebook or $249.99 for print and ebook. It only charges this when you're ready to export your first project. This fee is on the higher side for interior formatting, but because it's a one-time fee, Vellum gets significantly cheaper to use with every book you publish. Vellum is best suited to authors who wish to format their books without standard formatting expertise or notable graphic design skills. Vellum is also the app that I plan to use to format my upcoming book for writers, Build Your Best Writing Life. Option number two, Scrivener's Compile. 
Scrivener is a word processor designed specifically with long-form content in mind. Among its many features is the ability to compile your manuscript into a wide variety of formats, including popular print trims and ebook files. In Scrivener 3 for Mac, the compile feature has been simplified to make formatting your manuscript easier than ever. If you aren't already a Scrivener user, I wouldn't recommend downloading the app simply for the purpose of formatting your book. The other options on this list are likely better suited to your needs. But if you're already a Scrivener fan, don't hesitate to give the compile feature a try. You can learn how to format your manuscript in Scrivener 3 with the video tutorials in our Storytelling with Scrivener eCourse. This I have linked for you in today's episode description and in the episode transcript as well. Option number three, book design templates. Created by leading book designer Joel Friedlander, book design templates offers dozens of, well, book design templates created with print and ebook industry standards in mind and designed to suit various prominent genres, mediums, and markets. Some templates even mimic the designs of classic books. These templates, which are available for use in Microsoft Word, Apple Pages, and Adobe InDesign, are a great option for authors looking to DIY their formatting on a budget. You can download a template for the single use fee of 59 US dollars or a multi use fee of 119 US dollars. On to option number four we go, and this brings us to Adobe InDesign. If you are a tech savvy author who wants full control over your book's interior design, formatting your book in Adobe InDesign is a great option. However, this isn't a program you can learn overnight. Make sure you have at least a basic understanding of the program before diving in. Some DIY formatting templates, such as those produced by book design templates, can be used within Adobe InDesign. But if you'd like to format your manuscript from scratch in InDesign, you may find a step-by-step guide helpful such as the one from DIY Book Formats that I've linked for you in today's episode transcript. If you do plan to use InDesign, first brush up on your formatting knowledge. If you aren't familiar with common design elements, such as trim, margins, textiles, bleed, section breaks, and glyphs, you may wish to choose a simpler book design option. Or option number five, Hire a professional book formatter. Formatting a book can be tedious. If you'd like to forego the DIY route, you can instead hire a freelance book designer or commission formatting services through a book production company or distributor, such as Demanza, eBook Launch, Butte eBooks, Draft to Digital, or Book Baby. The cost of commissioning your book's interior formatting will range depending on the length of your project, whether you need ebook or print formatting, and the type of manuscript you've written. For example, nonfiction interior design is often more expensive because of its various lists, graphs, images, and other features not typically found in fiction. Interior formatting typically ranges between 100 and 300 US dollars. When hiring a formatter, first ensure that they have a strong understanding of industry standards and can meet your personal design preferences. Never book the services of a freelancer or company without signing a contract that ensures your manuscript will be returned to you in a timely and professional manner. Just a heads up, podcast listeners, I have listed all of the links to each of these five formatting options for you in today's episode description, but you can also find them in today's episode transcript at well-storied.com slash format. There are many interior formatting options available to self-published writers, including many I chose not to include on this list today. 
But if you're eager to produce a beautifully designed book that looks as professional as any produced by a traditional publishing house, these options are some of your best. Before pursuing the option that's right for you, take a moment to get familiar with the basic tenets of book formatting. Do you know what trim sizes and font styles are common in your genre? Whether you'd like glyphs at the beginning of your chapters or at section breaks. Do books in your genre typically use block paragraphs or indents? I've linked an article for you in today's episode transcript that can help you learn about all of this, and I promise it's not too complicated. You don't need to be a book formatting pro to DIY your own book design or effectively communicate with your book formatter, but a little insight can go a long way toward ensuring you create a beautiful and professional book design your readers will love. Thank you for listening to today's episode of The Podcast Writer. I hope you found it helpful to your writing journey. If so, make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss a new episode and to give the podcast a quick rating and review. Doing so goes a long way toward helping the podcast reach new writers and lets me know that you're enjoying what I'm creating. You can also give me a shout out directly on Twitter at Kristen underscore Kiefer. For additional guidance as you work to craft sensational novels and build your best writing life, be sure to head on over to www.well-storied.com where I share blog posts, workbooks, e-courses, and other helpful resources for writers. Again, that's w-e-l-l-s-t-o-r-i-e-d.com. Thank you again for tuning in to today's episode, my friend. Until next time, happy writing!